So growing up, I was a normal kid. I loved being outside. I was very active. I had a lot of friends and um, I was on the swimming and diving team, the basketball team, the volleyball team. Uh, going into school, I uh, just did a lot and um, everything was normal until I was about 17. They, it was actually the day before I started volleyball conditioning for my senior year and I was gonna be the captain. And I remember the doctor said, you can't play volleyball this year um, because it looks like you have this really rare heart disease called restrictive cardiomyopathy, even though you're not very symptomatic now, we're afraid that it's gonna progress in time. So we need to be very careful with you. Uh, so I didn't play my senior year and I had an ICD put in, which was a pacemaker defibrillator. And I felt pretty fine then. Uh, I just had the ICD and um, went about my senior year. I got involved in lots of other things like music. Um, I was Maria in the Sound of Music and I uh, joined show choir and the choir. So I kind of shifted from sports to music. And I'm really thankful for that. It opened up a lot of opportunities. Going into college at Bowling Green, I uh, was having fun. I loved meeting new people. I got involved in a lot of organizations and met tons of new friends. Uh, I was bound and determined to stay normal and um, stay healthy as much as I could. So I did well and um, things didn't really change um, a lot for me until last December. I came for a doctor's appointment and I just hadn't been feeling well. And um, they thought that my pressures in my heart had elevated significantly from the last time I'd seen them. So they had to do an emergency catheterization. Then they started moving more towards transplant at that point. Patients who have restrictive cardiomyopathy are at risk for two different things. Uh, first, they're at risk for high blood pressure in their lungs, um, but they're also at risk for sudden cardiac death. Um, sometimes we have patients wait for years for a heart transplant who are status two restrictive cardiomyopathy, and sometimes they wait a few months. So on December 4th, I listed, and that was a big, a big decision. Uh, it was big for me and my whole family. And that was, that was about the beginning of our journey. Never um, whimpered, never said, why me? And from that point forward, you know, every step was a new normal for us. So the journey, the true journey began on that day. What we thought, my husband and I thought, was going to be a couple years on the list ended up being four months. We got a call at 6.30 in the morning. She said, this is Dr. Cassaberry, we have a heart. And I got my heart on April 13th. And um, that is, you know, like one of the best days of my life that I was given a new shot at life, you know? Um, so my sister is my little sister and I'm the big sister, but our roles are really reversed with her condition because I really look up to her um, because she's so strong. And I, when she got the call that she had a match for her heart, there were feelings of excitement. There were feelings of, of the unknown. I was anxious, I was nervous. Um, and I was joyful that it was happening because I knew it needed to happen, but I was, I was afraid. She is my only sister. And um, when we got to the hospital, I just, I didn't want to leave. And having the Ronald McDonald house across the street made me not able to leave. I could stay with her. I was with her all day. I was with her the whole summer. And I think that emotionally, the best healing process for anyone is their family and having them close. And the Ronald McDonald House provides that for families. And um, it just is such an impact. So being able to walk across the street, um, being able to do simple things like come over here and shower and go back to the hospital, those are things that families don't think about. How am I gonna do that? Where am I gonna change? Where am I gonna sleep in the moment? And knowing that I had the Ronald McDonald House to come over here and do those things and go straight back over to be with Elizabeth while she was still there was such a blessing in disguise. Yeah, we, we love Ronald McDonald House from the transplant side of things. It provides not only a home away from home with a bed and you know place to get food, but it also find, provides a community for those families. You know, I think the families that do the best, even through really rocky times like the Samsons, are the ones who've really networked within the house itself. Doctors do their very best 
to heal children, but the love of a family is powerful medicine. And that's what our house provides. It provides a place where families can stay together and love and care for and support their kids until they get better and are able to go back home. Our Ronald McDonald House is here to care for families with children 21 and under who need medical treatment. So depending on the day, you might see an infant in the stroller in our lobby with her parents, or you might see a college student, 20 years old in our dining room, who's studying for a test. It was so healing to have people who treated you normal, who um, weren't concerned about your blood levels for the day, but more concerned about your plans for the afternoon. Um, and it, it really is healing to just be in an environment that feels so safe and that feels so just warm all the time. And at, at the Ronald McDonald House, when you walk in, it's immediately encouragement. It feels like, we would always say like, the Ronald McDonald House feels like a victory, just feels like victory when you come in. It felt like getting here was a victory and that I wasn't in the hospital anymore, but it, it, so I had like some place to go from, but I was still growing and still recovering. It was healing to see other families going through similar situations having victory. Yeah. People need people, and that's what we found here at the Ronald McDonald House.